One of the reasons I like to have patients have some of these immunology tests from the Greek lab drawn, uh, not only to get the information from the test itself, but also to demonstrate that even if a person has had a surgery and they've had a tumor removed and everyone says, oh, you're cancer free, there's still the issue of circulating tumor cells and circulating stem cells. Because these cells are special and they have a particular characteristics of mobility in tissue, they can move out of the area of the original tumor's uh, mass, they can travel in the bloodstream, kind of hop on the highway and hop off and, and land in another distant tissue where they might uh, try to recruit normal cells to make energy anaerobically and set up a new tumor and a new nest and a new home. And this is really how people uh, end up with uh, distant metastases, especially in the bone, say for example in breast cancer. I treated many people who had a breast surgery for a tumor, they were told everything was fine. Eight years later, patient has pain in their hip or the lower back and they have a bone metastases. These metastases are created by the circulating tumor cells and stem cells. Because they have the characteristic of being relatively immortal and can live up to 20 years, we uh, need to take them seriously. And part of the testing that RGCC does is to help characterize them in terms of all of these uh, abilities for uh, migration, invasion, making new blood vessels, and all kinds of other things that these cells can do in order to uh, make a metastatic lesion. It's estimated that even if you have a tumor that is between 0.6 millimeters, which is tiny, and 1.1 millimeter, uh, this, the tumor has already shed 6 billion circulating tumor cells and stem cells. So I always like to remind people that cancer is a microscopic problem. Our bodies are made to kill these cells, but when they don't, there are many cells released prior to the time that anyone knows that they even have a cancer. So if it takes a timeline in developing a one centimeter tumor is approximately 10 years, you can only imagine that these cells are floating in the circulation for a good amount of time. And so depending on the other uh, factors in the person's metabolism and body and cellular microenvironment, uh, these other cells may or may not be successful in creating another tumor. So it's one of those points that's very important to recognize because our traditional thinking, although they recognize circulating tumor cells in uh, textbooks of oncology, uh, there isn't really too much thought given to counting them, characterizing them, and specifically treating them. So it's a very nice uh, treatment that can be obtained, easily administered, easily tolerated, that this immunology lab creates. And it's called a short oligonucleotide treatment. And what it's based on is the isolation of the microRNA that will drive the tumor cell replication. I know probably now when people talk about all these things in grade school, but basically DNA is double-stranded, it has to unzip, the RNA is single-stranded, it goes along and copies all these sequences of base pairs, and then from that RNA, we make copies of proteins in the ribosomes. So when we have tumor cells that are dividing orders of magnitude faster than a normal cell, which lives and dies 5 to 120 days, we uh, can see uh, and identify different what they call clones of uh, microRNA proteins that are being produced to promote the division, longevity, and activity of the tumor cells. So the immunology lab has very sophisticated and it can take a sample of your circulating tumor cells, a blood sample, they isolate those circulating tumor cells and stem cells, they will categorize the various groups of proteins that are being produced by these microRNAs and 
even classify them as to the aggressive nature of them and kind of quote unquote grade the targets. So they can be kind of on a scale of one to 10, one is not too aggressive and 10 is very aggressive. And so they will make a treatment to silence the microRNA of a given target. And this is a very, very handy thing because if you can silence the promoter that's driving the cells to replicate, you can kill cells and cut down progression of disease. This is also nice because you can make an assessment repeatedly over periods of three to four months and have new treatments made based on the new activity that's identified. So basically what they do is sequence the microRNA of your particular tumor cells in a particular clone or group and then create what they call an antisense molecule that has a sequence of base pairs that is opposite and attracts like a magnet. So when this antisense molecule encounters microRNA, it will bind to it, make it double-stranded, and completely take it out of activity, and thus silence it. Okay? So that's how it kills cancer cells. And of course, we know that these microRNAs can change, and some can be dominant at one point, be eliminated, others will crop up. So this is a very nice uh, method of testing and treating sequentially to, over time, reduce the circulating tumor cell and stem cell count. One of the other interesting aspects of this SOT treatment, as it were, is that it's highly sophisticated. I've seen other companies try and make this type of treatment and offer it for $250,000, $300,000, takes them three or four months to make. This lab is so sophisticated and has this whole process completely organized and efficient. And we can send a sample of blood to Greece and expect the treatment to be finished in three to four weeks and then back to us in maybe five weeks at the most. And this is important when you consider time is of the essence in treating cancer patients. We don't want to wait forever. Three or four months could be a lifetime. The other thing that's very unique and I want to draw the attention back to is that targets can be graded. Now this whole process has been, uh, it's continually being upgraded. And in the first years that I was using this uh, test and, and the treatment, uh, there was no grading of targets. In other words, it was kind of an all or nothing thing. Now they understand the subtleties of this and try and create treatments so that even if a person has many areas of cancer involvement, they can still safely receive one of these treatments if it's a lower, less aggressive target that's being, uh, the, the treatment is being made for. I think that's a very important thing to remember because Kind of in the old days, it was uh, SOT treatment was not really advisable if somebody had any kind of metastatic lesions, but now it can be used. 